Hello. Recently I've been experiencing some pretty serious issues with this, my 20-year-old Minolta Dimage Scan Multi-Pro Medium Format Film Scanner. Now the issue is that although the scanner appears to start up fine and complete its usual initialization sequence, uh, so the light on the front flashes green for about a minute uh, and then goes solid green, my computer and the ViewScan software just can't detect it. And I'll just show you now exactly what I mean by that. So turning the scanner around, we can see the two types of obsolete port that it has. So you see the two SCSI ports on the left and the two Firewire on the right. So the way I connect the scanner to my modern MacBook Pro is just by using this pretty rare and expensive Adaptec SCSI to USB adapter. And I can just plug it into either of the SCSI ports on the scanner and then into my laptop. So now starting up ViewScan, which is just a scanning software that supports loads of different older scanners, you can see that although this way of connecting the scanner has always worked for me in the past, I now just get this message telling me that ViewScan can't find a scanner connected to the computer. So my first thought at a solution was that I'd probably have better luck if I were to connect my obsolete scanner with the obsolete ports to an appropriate obsolete computer. So I brought out my old G5, which has a Firewire input. So we unplug the SCSI USB adapter and plug in a Firewire cable. Oh, and without forgetting to change the output dip switch. So then plugging the Firewire cable into the machine, I can finally try to start ViewScan. But as you can see, we just get exactly the same message we got on the laptop. ViewScan can't find a scanner. And I tried many other things after this. So I actually managed to track down the original scanner software that would have come with the scanner when it was originally purchased. But again, no luck. And after this, I tried a Windows machine. I tried things like only turning on the computer after the scanner had been plugged in and turned on. I tried a second SCSI to USB adapter. But unfortunately, I could never get any of these things to work. I just couldn't get any of the computers to see the scanner. So I thought next I'd try to do some research on what the problem could be, but unfortunately, I didn't find much that seemed to help my particular issue. So luckily for me, there is actually an online group, especially for people that own and use this particular model of scanner. But unfortunately, when I posted there, the members didn't have much to suggest that could have been faulty with the hardware and I am, you know, pretty certain now that it is a hardware issue, apart from possibly failing capacitors. So what I'm going to do now is take the cover off the scanner just to see if there's anything obviously wrong, like a failed capacitor. So it's very easy to get the cover off, you just need to undo these two screws at the back. And then turning the scanner over, there are just two more on the bottom. And then I can just carefully slide the cover off like this. Okay, so whatever's wrong with the scanner, I'm pretty sure it has something to do with this main board. And that's just because, as I mentioned before, the scanner seems to start up fine. So it's unlikely to be an issue with the power supply. And if there was some mechanical issue, I don't think it would stop ViewScan from seeing the scanner. So that kind of leaves the main board. Uh, but unfortunately, there's really nothing obviously wrong with it. Uh, so no blown capacitors, no burns or anything. So what I'm hoping is that it's just some kind of simple connection problem. So that there's a connector that's become oxidized or something and just isn't making connection anymore. So I'm unplugging all the cables I can and cleaning both the plugs and sockets with alcohol and a toothbrush. And hopefully that does something, uh, although I'm not too optimistic. So now with all the cables plugged back in, the cover put back on the scanner, uh, the scanner turned on. I can test the scanner again, but as you can see, yet again, the same problem. So what I tried next is a bit of a long story, so I hope you'll bear with me. So I did three things. Firstly, I just sifted over loads and loads of old forum posts about people's issues with this particular scanner, just to see if I could find anything helpful. Secondly, I just posted about my specific issue on Reddit and Facebook and various different groups. And thirdly, I just contacted a, a bunch of different uh, repair places on the off chance that they were able to repair my particular scanner. Now, all of this effort was basically getting me nowhere, and I was thinking that it might just be impossible for me to get my scanner fixed. 
Uh, that was until I got some responses to a post I made on a film scanning Facebook group. Now what I was told is that there's another 20 year old film scanner, the Nikon uh, CoolScan 8000, that's prone to a very similar connection problem to mine. So it'll uh, appear to turn on fine, but then it'll you know, not connect to a computer. Now this is what the main board from the Nikon scanner looks like. And this connection problem is caused by the two highlighted ICs. And what these chips are supposed to do is control the scanner's firewire connection. Now there's quite a large community that still use these old Nikon scanners, and these two chips are like a known common failure point. So how is this relevant to me and my scanner? Well, on the left is the Nikon's main board, and on the right is the main board from my scanner. Now if I zoom in slightly, you should be able to see that my board has exactly the same two problematic firewire chips. So you can see a Philips chip in blue and a TI chip in red. And the failure of these two chips is almost certainly the cause of my problems. So thanks very much to the Film Scanners Facebook group. Now I could hypothetically fix the board myself, uh, so there are replacement chips available on eBay. But as I've never done SMD soldering before, I think I'd probably just cause more damage. So I need to find someone that can repair the board for me. And I was kind of unsure where I was going to find someone until I remembered this website. And it's a website run by, I think, just one man, whose speciality is just fixing old, specifically Nikon, film scanners. And I actually already asked him if he could fix my scanner, uh, but unfortunately he said no, I only fix Nikon scanners. So I contacted him again, asking if he'd fix my scanner, uh, but this time explaining that I only wanted these two chips replaced, uh, that are also in Nikon scanners. And he said, oh, I didn't know that. Uh, yes, just send me the board and I'll replace the chips. Okay, so now I just need to remove the scanner's main board and send it to this repairman. So like I did before, I'm just removing all the plugs and ribbon cables. And I'm just trying my best not to pull out any wires or, or break the ribbon cable, uh, which would be pretty irritating at this stage. And then to take the board out, there are just these two screws on the top and then five that hold it into the back plate. And now, uh, again, trying not to break anything, I can just carefully lift the board right out. Okay, so that's what the board looks like. And I thought I'd just quickly have a close up look at the two chips I'm getting replaced, just to see if either of them have any sign of damage. But as you can see, they both look just normal. Okay, now it's time to package the board. Now I probably should be using some sort of anti-static bag, uh, but unfortunately I don't have one lying around. So I'm just going to use tissue paper and cardboard and that should be fine. Okay, that's about done. I'll send that off now and hopefully it arrives undamaged. Now while I was talking to the repair guy, Green, I mentioned him that I was making a video about the process of getting this scanner repaired and I asked him if he'd send me some photos of his process of replacing the chips, and he very kindly agreed. Okay, first he sent an image of the board with the faulty chips removed, so you can see them just on the side there, and there's a close-up. And then a pic of his soldering workstation, and then a pic of the repair viewed through the microscope, and finally the finished repair. Okay, so a few weeks later I received this package in the post. So I'll unbox the board now and put it back in the scanner and then we'll see if the repairs worked. Okay, there's the board and it really looks basically exactly as it did before. So you can see the two replaced chips on the left there. And there's really no sign they've been replaced at all. Although of course I know they have been replaced just because the new chips have different date codes to the originals. But yeah, it looks like a very professionally done job. Okay, so we're very close to being able to test the repaired board. So you can see I'm just carefully sliding those ribbon cables into their slot and then carefully locating the board on its kind of platform. And then just quickly the reassembly. Uh, so it's exactly the same process as taking it apart. So the two screws on top of the board and then five in the back. 
And the hardest part of reassembly is just getting these ribbon cables plugged back in. But just with a bit of finessing and kind of wiggling, I got them in eventually. And then finally all the plugs go back in their sockets. Okay, so I can finally now slide the cover back on and we're ready for some testing. So yet again, I've got everything turned on and plugged in and I can try opening ViewScan. And as you can see, there's no error message this time, which is a very, very good sign. And under source, you can see it says scan multi pro, which means the scanner is definitely connected to ViewScan. So for the next test, I'm going to try scanning a piece of film. And to do this, I just clamp the piece of film in the film holder and then insert the holder into the scanner. I then press preview. And as you can see, the scanner is starting to produce an image, which is very, very good news. So the repair has definitely been successful. And I'm really quite shocked by that, to be honest. I really wasn't expecting the scanner just to work straight away like this. And that's just for a few reasons, like I first noticed the issues with the scanner's SCSI output, which is how the scanner's connected to the computer now. And I had thought that these two chips that were replaced only affect the firewire, but you know, apparently not, as just replacing these two chips seems to have fixed both the SCSI and firewire, in my scanner anyway. And another reason is, this is really the first time since the repair that the board's being tested at all. And that's just because I only sent off the board to the repairman, and he didn't have any you know, donor Minolta scanner to test it in. So yeah, just very, very pleased and surprised that everything's working now. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful, or at least interesting. So I'm planning on making more videos about using this scanner, uh, so subscribe if that's something you're interested in. Uh, thanks for watching, see you next time.